Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. We're going to be studying this on, on, on Tuesday night from Philippians. Whatever is true... Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, the scripture says, let your mind dwell on these things. And you know, we got this. It's pure, true, lovely. And there's a lot of pages in this book. I don't know if you've, how many of you endeavored to read the whole Bible? I mean, it's quite an undertaking. I know I endeavored to, 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 to read it, but to read it to that place where I know it so well, I can tell you about it. It's a different depth of, than just speed reading. You know, I've sped read lots of stuff, and it doesn't mean I got it down. But this book, I can't seem to get done with it. I keep reading it over and over, and I'm like, you know, everyone's like, hey, pastor, have you read the latest, newest book that tells us what the Bible says? And he said, I promise I'm going to read it after I finish reading this one book. I've been working on it for like 35 years. I just, you know, I can't put it down. As soon as I finish that book, then I'm going to go read the other books that are supposedly going to tell me what this book says. But some people say to me, how do you know the Bible so well? I'm like, um, well, ask my wife what book I read all the time. I got one favorite. That's it. This book. There's so much to it. There's such a depth. Every time I read, I'm like, when did they stick that in there? I didn't see that last time. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? How the Bible just, what, it speaks to you on every day, something different. And you, it's like hits you right where you're at. It's because the Bible is inspired by God's Spirit. It's not like any other book. And His Spirit knows what you need. I love this book, man. This book points me to Jesus over and over and over. And it reminds me of things that I forget. You know, like, hey, so you left your family to come follow the Lord. The Lord says, I'll give you a hundred times. You left those brothers? I, I come from a family with six kids. I'm the oldest of six. You, 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 you said, I'm going to go follow the Lord whether they come with me or not. So I got three brothers, two sisters. The Lord goes, watch how many brothers I give you. I mean, he says a hundredfold. Mothers, brothers, sisters, fathers. I mean, this is something that we, we cannot downplay. We have, a, we have a whole generation longing to feel like they're part of a family. This generation, more than any generation... I noticed that the, the youth feel detached. And the family unit has been under attack for some time in our nation. The whole definition of it is constantly being challenged. And if you hold to a biblical teaching where a man is to love his wife and nourish and cherish her and honor her until death do you what? Part. Part. You're old-fashioned. But how, how, how is that for the kids that grow up with mom and dad that are devoted to one another? That don't go trading for other partners and don't, you know, play around and they stay. You know what it does? It makes a stable home life for the kid. Anybody have one of those? I didn't. My mom married and divorced five times. I got to, you know, have new stepbrothers and sisters every couple of years. Sometimes in the, the how do I say this? The longer time went, the shorter the marriages stayed. Like one month I had these guys for my, my stepbrothers and sisters, and the mo next month I had all new ones. Those ones was gone. And If you grow up with that, it kind of messes with you a little. And it doesn't give you that stability. And then Jesus says, come follow me. I got some stability you didn't even think about. Because the family you get in the Lord, 
This is the beautiful part. The family you get in the Lord, how long do I get to keep them? Forever. I mean, we're talking like stability to the final degree here. We, like, this is great. Well, Paul, Paul is experiencing this. Now, he's never been to Rome, yet in this letter, and there's one other letter he writes, the book of Colossians, is the only two places where he sends all of these different greetings by name. A who's who of different people. Some that we know he met personally. Some I don't know if he met. I'm going to wait till I get to heaven. I have questions. Did you just send a greeting to them because you heard about them from Priscilla and Aquila? Or did you hear about them from Mary? Did you hear about them from, from your brother here, Rufus? But whatever the, whatever the case was, Paul had a big family in Christ. Now he goes on, verse 14. Greet, yeah, a syncritus, poor guy. I thought Isidoro was bad. But, but. And, and, and Phlegion and Hermes and Patrobus and Hermas and the brethren with them and greet Philo, Philo, Philologus. Sorry, buddy. I know Philo in Greek is lover. Brotherly love. I don't know what logos is. Anyone know what that is? The word. Okay, lover of the word. That's a pretty good name. And Julia and Nerus and his sister and Olympus and the saints who are with them. And then he says, verse 16, something that all Italians already know. Greet one another, it says, with a holy kiss. Now, some of those guys don't do that holy. This holy kiss is, you know. And he says, And all the churches of Christ greet you. Now, verse 17, Now I urge you, brethren, here's, here's his last instructions while he's giving to them. I urge you to keep your eye on those that cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned. He says, Turn away from them. You know, why are there those guys? I mean, do they just seem to breed and multiply. I mean, throughout church history, they always seem to be some guys that want to cause dissension in the church. They don't go to church because they want to get fed and encouraged and encourage other people. They just got to go pick a little fight about something. And it doesn't matter what it is. You know, they're like, you didn't pass the hat. What kind of church is this? They don't pass the hat, you know. I'm like, there's a box on the table. Well, I want everyone to see me give, you know. I said, yeah. I, I remember a story about that. The Pharisee, Jesus pointed out, made a big show about his giving. And there was a widow. She had like two, two little mites, so like a quarter of a penny. Jesus said about her, she gave more than the guy that had all that, you know, clink, clink, clink. Everyone listened to me giving the money. And making a show of it. Jesus, when you give, give in secret. Don't let your left hand know it. There. In other words, it's not to me a show before others. It's a, it's a gift to, unto, unto the Lord, right? We're giving for the work of the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. I hate those places where they pressure you for money. You know, that's another thing I can say. 25 years. How many, how many times have you guys seen me take an offering in 25 years? Pass the hat. Never. I already know I can answer that one with full assurance. I just, don't, I just don't think I... I don't want the ministry to be known as the ministry that always begs for money. Like God is broke. you got to give or God is going to go out of business. You know what? For those guys, I kind of wish that nobody would give to them. They'd go out of business and make it peaceful for the rest of us. So we could preach the gospel for what it is. Good news. You know, there are people that want to support the work of the Lord, but that's because God put it in their heart. And God loves a cheerful giver. Someone who, cheerful means like they can give it freely. They're not being forced to or feel compulsion or, oh, wow, everyone's looking at me. You know, the guy's waving the thing. Have you ever been to a church where the guy stands there? And I don't know why, but they pick the biggest dudes. <laughs> they look like WW something wrestler dudes, you know, and they stand there with the thing and they, they got a big stick, you know the bag on the end your turn and they don't move like a statue I'm waiting what are you gonna do you're like something 
gum wrapper. I don't know. Just get the guy out of my face. And I mean, they just, that's not, that's not giving like, because you gave, because you want to support the work of the Lord. You feel awkward, like compulsion. That is not scriptural. Paul wouldn't even let them take the offering, what they wanted to give to him to take to the saints in Jerusalem. He said, you guys arrange it before I come so that when I'm there, you know, no one will feel like pressure. Like, oh, here's the missionary guy who's going to be going to Jerusalem. We've got to take an offering right now for him. He says, do it before I even get there so when I get there, I can just stick to what the, the real message is about, the gospel. Man, that's my kind of preacher. We don't want the gospel to be muddled by pleas for money. Please, please give us money. We need money. We're going to go out of business. This is a, this is, you know, some fella came to me just a few weeks ago and said he wanted to go into the ministry. And he asked me to pray for him and his wife. They were going back to where they were from on the mainland. And they were really encouraged looking at our little ministry on the beach. And I, I just felt like, you know, he came from um, one of those denominations where they put a lot of emphasis on, on the giving portion of their service. And I said, listen, I'm going to teach you something. I hope that this could, you know, like pastor to pastor kind of thing that I, I found that is really important. The Bible teaches this from the Old Testament. It, it, it's a name of God. Actually, it's a moniker of God, a title. Jehovah is his name, the name of the Lord, Jehovah. And Jireh, in Hebrew, is shall continuously, presently, future, in the past, in the present, in the future. It's a continuous, we don't even, what was the, the term in English class they used to say? Present continuous something verb. Uh, in other words, like he always does it. God will always provide. He's the provider continuously. So I told him, I said, listen, just to encourage you, it's Jehovah Jireh, not Sheep Jireh. And he looked at me and said, Sheep Jireh is, you know, we're, we're supposed to pastor our flock of sheep that God gives unto our charge. And our job is not to, to shear the little buggers down to the skin <laughs> and take all their wool and let them freeze to death. Because we're like, hey man, I'm getting every little last hair off that little sheepy. This is not sheep gyro. We are not here to fleece the flock and take away all their, their, their coat of wool. There's a right time when you shear the sheep. It's when it's too hot and you got to, you know, the, the shepherd knows. But it's for the good of the sheep to lighten that, that heavy nap on them that grew during the winter. You don't do it all year round. You make the poor little sheep bald and going into winter, he's going to freeze to death. Now, I know that just from a farming analogy, but I wanted him to get the idea that this is, there's, a, there's the right time when, when and, and honestly, we're not here to shear the sheep. We're supposed to, as pastors, we're supposed to go, it is God who provides for us. I can stand before you and say, listen, guys, if, if time permitted, I would tell you miracle after miracle for how the Lord has provided for my wife and I for 25 years. From the birth of our children, when we couldn't afford it, we didn't have the health insurance. This is before mandatory health insurance. And we were so poor, they said, oh, you're so poor, you can't even be on the insurance in the state of Hawaii, the, the, the ship insurance. You've got to go on MOMI, Mothers of Modest Income, some federal program. I've told you that testimony, right? Little cardboard little thing that looked like it was from a dot matrix printer that I didn't even know they still used them. You know, with the pin feed on the sides and they tear the card out. We got one of those from the federal government. I thought it looked like a joke. I mean, honestly, it looked like a kindergartner made this card up. And I was supposed to take this into the hospital and say, yeah, I'm on this program. You know what's the funny thing? They took that card. They said, wow, it's a good thing you got this. And then a month goes by. We're still in the hospital over in Kapilani. Jan's trying to keep Joy in. She had gone into preterm labor way early. Like we were, thought, she's feeling a little bit warm. Honey, let's go swimming today in Kealakikua. We got to go visit the doctor down there. She comes, she's got a bathing suit all, all ready to go. We go in there, hey, doc. 
How's it going? Great. We're going to go for a swim after this. Uh, she goes, I'm having this, like, my t first baby, so we don't know. I think it's Braxton Hicks contractions. I keep getting these little contractions, and, you know, and, you, it, like, every time her tummy tightened, Jan's so skinny. Every time she tightened up, you could see the outline of the head, the backbone, the little feet down here. I mean, I could see Joy's feet poking, like, through, like, tickle, tickle, you know? And I, how often are they? Like, every couple minutes. No, no, it's not supposed to be every couple of No, no, really, every couple of minutes. And see, watch, look, she's having one right now. How long does it last? Oh, a while. So he checks her, he goes, you're in full-term late. I mean, you're going to have the, you're, you're fully dilated. You're going to have this baby. You're 90% effaced. I mean, it's like baby coming. But this is like two months, three months too soon. He goes, you're going to the hospital. And she goes, no, I'm not. I'm going swimming. It's like total disbelief. We go over to Honolulu and live in the hospital. And it gets pricey to live in one of those hospitals where, where you're full-time, high-risk pregnancy. They're constantly monitoring you. And I go in with this little paper card. Here you go. Do you have health insurance? Yeah, we got this. That'll do. A month later, do you have your new card? Yeah, it just arrived. Here you go. They Xerox it. Have a nice day. When I saw the bill, I almost vomited. I mean, seriously, it was over a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. For we we stayed, you know, a little over a month. And I just like in shock. I'm like, can I make payments for the rest of my life? You know, is there a payment plan option? And the lady goes, Oh no, you got your card. You're good. Have a Merry Christmas. And they discharge us, and I, I, I'm like, are you sh sh what do I owe? Oh, no, it's covered. When my dad, who always complained about the government, my whole life, I heard all the stories, the terrible, terrible, I said, Dad, all the money you paid in over all those years, we just got it back with this child and this little card. I'm going to frame it, you know? I mean, it was just like unbelievable. And if you would have asked me, how did you like being so poor that you had to have, because if I could have stayed in Arizona, we had the 80-20 insurance thing, right? Like, you know, they pay 80, you pay 20%. 20% and a quarter million still would have busted us. And yet the Lord goes, no, I'm going to send you to Hawaii. That little guy's going to go, you have to go. And you're going to listen, and you're going to go. And I'm going to make you so poor, but I'm going to give you plenty of family. And don't be taking no offering. I'll take care of you. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Now, you can tell people to believe this and live it, but you can't if you don't do it. But I've had to do it. And I've had to see God's hand pull off things that I, you know, I look with hindsight and go, wow, I could have, couldn't have seen that one coming. You just can't, you know, you, you just, you don't realize how great a God we have. But this is a walk of faith. We walk, the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. Everybody wants to be able to see it. And even pastors, they, they, they're being taught, count how many people come? In, in fact, in some of the um, denominations, they affectionately call it nickels and noses. You count how many, head count. You have to keep track of how many people attend your services. And then what's the average giving? And if we can increase that by 10 more members, that means that we'll get an average of this much more money. And this will help us in our financial projections. And that's what I call sheep gyra. That's when you've turned from looking to God, Jehovah, your provider, to the sheep as your provider. And that's a danger. Because God doesn't worry about if, there, if there's, the scripture says God can say by few or by many. I mean, he could, and he has done this, by the way. He has brought in our whole income for the week, not from anyone here, just to show off. You know, we get rained out that week. Nobody put anything in the box. 
Home church can be very damaging to our pocketbook. <laughs> Except great for my faith, because then I'm like, okay, Lord, what are you going to do? Am I fired? Or, or are you just letting it rain because you want to water the earth? Or, or you want to do something else I don't understand? Or maybe because I have some sweet, sweet time. You know, some of the best family time in the Lord is when we sit in the house. So maybe he just wants me to learn to appreciate my family in Christ. You know, last time we were in the house because of rain, people stayed around afterwards. We watched movies, had popcorn, and hung out, and had fellowship for hours. And because I never even got to, you know, like this is real. This really refreshed my 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 soul. I just just to feel like I belonged in the family of of Christ. I was like, cool. But the truth is, you belong in this family by de facto. You're a part of it. Because you believe. And Paul's saying, these are all brethren. Greet them. Greet them with a holy kiss. Let them know. Now, he says, watch out for guys that teach you other things and cause hindrances. These men, he says, are not slaves of the Lord Jesus, verse 18, but they are slaves of their own appetites. And by their smooth and their flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. For the report of your obedience, Paul says, has reached to all. Therefore, I am rejoicing over you. Now, I'm stopping halfway through this verse. I'm going to pick up here next week. You knew it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't make the whole chapter. I know. <laughs> but I have to stop on this point because he says, the report of their what? Their obedience. Wouldn't that be kind of cool if the only thing that people heard about this church was the people at that church they obey the Lord, whatever the Lord tells them to do. I mean, how would you like that to be written in the Bible of this church? That people, they, they, they go, what's that church like? Man, those people, they obey the Lord. The Lord tells them to do something, stop, help that person. They stop and help the person. The Lord tells them to, to, to go here and share, and they, and they do it cheerfully. Or go give to that person that's hurting over there, and they... I mean, even if he tells them, take your shirt and give it to that person. They're the church that obeys. Would you like that to go down? I mean, anyone would volunteer to have that written of you in the Holy Bible? I mean, would that be cool or what? The report of the church at Rome was that they were obedient to the faith. Now, some people just like glaze right over. Just keep reading the names. Keep going. I can't. I'm like, that's a genuine church. That's real church. That's a church that's doing church the way I think we're really supposed to do church. When the Lord says do it, you say, okay, Lord. You don't tell the master no. You obey. What a cool thing to have written. Paul says the report of their obedience had reached to all. Man, I would love it if that, that's what people have heard about our church. That church, little church on the beach, they just, Lord tells them to do something, and they just do it. Would that be nice to go down as a, you know, marked as a church? We were the ones that just obeyed when the Lord said to do. I know that's what got me here. So I want to encourage you, even if it, to your natural mind, doesn't make sense, but you feel God telling you to do something. Can I encourage you this week? Just purpose in your heart. Just do it. You might not know why at the time. You might not understand the ramifications of what will come. But I assure you, when you obey the Lord, that's when you see Jehovah Jireh, our provider, provide. That's when you get to experience the family. That's when you get to experience the blessings. The blessings come when we're obedient. Not when we're disobedient. I get lots of people telling me, Pastor, I'm just not being blessed. And I'm like, what do you feel the Lord's telling me to do? Well, yeah, I know he wanted me to do that and go do this and help that person, but I just, no, I didn't want to do it. Why don't you go do it, Pastor? I hate those calls. Pastor, there was someone on the side of the road by Costco. They were broke down. I felt like the Lord 
was telling me to stop and help him. I'm like, yeah, so what happened? Did you help him? No, I drove by. I was thinking maybe I'm feeling bad about it. Could you go help him? I actually have had that call. I am not going to get to have the writing what the Church of Rome had written about them. If people call me up saying, he didn't, I didn't obey. If he put it in your heart to stop and help him, what's the answer? Stop and help. But I don't know how to fix a car. Maybe you're not supposed to fix the car. Maybe just give him a ride home or, or, or you know, God knows. Just obey and find out. But let's be the church that obeys, okay? Because that's when we see the blessings of the Lord in ways we can't even imagine. When you just say, okay, Lord, here I am. Do what you want. Next week, let's pick up right there from their obedience to the last things that he tells them. Some of the sweetest words for our faith. They really are words that will c carry you in this journey of faith forward. So l let's close here. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the sweet encouragement of your scripture, Lord. Thank you for a church, just the, just the mention of a church, even what Paul had never been to, yet he knew they were obedient to you. Lord, may we be that church that's obedient to your spirit, to your leading in our lives. And Father, I just pray that you would, you would help us where we, where we question or where we wonder, is it you? Lord, make it clear to us in ways only you can do, Lord. Make your spirit just speak in a way that we would know it's you. And we would be able to walk in those sweet appointments that you prepare for us. Lord, thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ here. The mothers and fathers that you've added to me in the Lord is such a sweet blessing to my life. I just thank you for that, Lord. And I pray as we go from here, we could help pass that knowledge to this next generation that they too can have a great, great family beyond maybe even a dysfunctional earthly family that they were birthed into. Lord, we just pray that you would, would open our eyes and, and let us share this good news so that they too could see the great family of Christ that you have prepared for us. I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. Provide for us now as we go from here by the leading of your spirit. I ask that for each person. Give us what we need. Give us this day our daily bread. In Christ's name we pray. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? Let's sing a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.